Well, there's a, there's a lot of really exciting things that are coming down the pipe, and some of the work is being done here. Um, a lot of the technology uh, that we're looking at in non-invasive brain stimulation is probably the hottest thing right now. Uh, the technique that we primarily use is something called repetitive transcranial magnet stimulation, which actually uses a concept many of you may remember from your high school physics class, uh, Faraday's law, where a magnetic field actually can induce an electric current. And some really smart person figured out that creating a device that created a short burst of a very strong magnetic field can actually depolarize nerve cells on the surface of the brain. And we're finding that this may actually have clinical applicability both in the assessment of injury, but also in the treatment of certain conditions. This is a technique that's actually fairly commonly used now for refractory depression uh, for people in the, actually out in the community. But there's also some evidence that suggests that we may have the potential to actually, quote unquote, rewire the brain using this technique to establish new activity in injured areas in the brain. So that's probably one of the most exciting things that's going on. And, um, one of our researchers is involved in a, or has come up with a very advanced technique that actually uses multiple points of repetitive transcranial magnet stimulation at the same time to actually produce connections between injured areas. Um, <clears throat> there's also a lot of really new things that are coming down the line as far as imaging techniques. Um, there is a technique that many of you may be familiar with and heard of called diffusion tensor imaging tractography, which actually is a way to map large bundles of nerve cells throughout the brain. Um, and this is a really exciting imaging technique that will help us, I think, in the future diagnostically to help assess you know, where in detail someone's been hurt and uh, extrapolate from that as how, how it's gonna affect their function. This is still in the very infancy stages. We're still learning about this technique right now. So I say a lot of people that are out in the community that are using this, uh, we need some more information to use this, uh, have real good clinical correlation with what this means, but it is exciting new, new things. Um, my particular area of research is in the area of uh, hormones, neurotransmitter effects of how brain injury affects hormone function and so forth. So there's always new stuff coming down the pipe as far as pharmacological interventions and things like that. So uh, new medication trials will continue to be forthcoming. Uh, one of the other big things is not necessarily a tech, techie intervention, but stem cells, um, both for spinal cord and brain injury, there's been a number of recent trials looking at stem cell implantation. Again, still in the research status, but clearly with a lot of potential for, again, helping find the so-called so cure for uh, some of these severe injuries. So um, I'll just comment on that for a second. With all these new technologies, often people have wondered whether we as rehab physicians are gonna have a role if they come up with the cure. And you know, I think what we're actually gonna end up seeing is more people surviving and more people with impairments that continue to need rehabilitation after their treatment, it may actually open the door that they need more therapeutic intervention and things that we're doing.